Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing clathrin-mediated endocytosis and the endocytic pathway. Okay, so we have now endocytosed a portion of membrane out of the plasma membrane. We have formed a clathrin-coated endocytic vesicle and we've then taken off our clathrin coat. What is then going to happen to this endocytic vesicle? Okay, well the first thing it goes into is something known as an early endosome, okay? And this is why you must not confuse an endocytic vesicle with an endosome. The thing that you endocytose, the membrane which you take from the plasma membrane, is called an endocytic vesicle, not an endosome. Many people will call this an endosome, but it is not an endosome. Okay, the endosome is a much, much bigger structure that is actually an intracellular organelle. Okay, so let me draw a massive, great, much bigger structure. Okay, and it's basically got this sort of tubular, um, tubular vesicular structure. Okay, so it has these sort of bulges and then tubes connecting them. It's like something from sci-fi, really. Okay, so you've got these sort of tubes with little sort of corridors between them. It's like the image of some sort of spaceship. Okay, so here are these vesicles and then tubes between them. And it would be bigger than this. It wouldn't just have three vesicles with two tubes. It would be bigger. And this sort of a structure is known as a tubulovesicular structure. So tubulo, meaning the tubes. And then we've got the vesicles as well. So vesicular structure. Okay, right, so just a little bit of information for you now. The diameter of these vesicles within the early endosome, the diameter from here to here, is around one micrometer, which is quite big. Okay, and the diameter of these tubes between the uh, vesicles, uh, this is around 50 nanometers. Okay, so you've got these little tubes connecting multiple v um, vesicles together, and this is what's known as the early endosome. Now, the first thing that happens to this endocytic vesicle is that it's going to fuse and empty its contents into the early endosome. So that's where this uh, endocytic vesicle is going to go. It's going to go into this early endosome. So let's colour in the early endosome in this turquoise colour here. So the early endosome is very close, generally, to the plasma membrane. Okay, so, if you remember back to the start, we initially had some target protein that was going to go into the early endosome. Okay? Oh, and by the way, I should just mention one other thing. These endocytic vesicles, some of them, in the axon terminals, some of them can be directly recycled. Okay? So I will mention this actually first. So this is the pathway that occurs in all cells, many different types of cell, uh, but in specifically axon terminals, which is what we were specifically looking at, uh, we have re-endocytosed this membrane so that we can turn it into a synaptic vesicle. So there is a direct recycling pathway, okay? So there is a direct recycling where you don't even need to go to the endosome, basically, to the early endosome. Instead, what can happen is this synap endocytic vesicle here can just be refilled with neurotransmitter. If it's got the right collection of proteins in, it can just be refilled with neurotransmitter and returned to a synaptic vesicle, which will then dock at the plasma membrane. So that there is a direct recycling pathway of endocytic vesicles in uh, axon terminals, which is uh, more efficient than sending them through the early endosome. But in all other cells, what will happen is these endocytic vesicles will uh, go to the end early endosome, they'll fuse with the end early endosome, and the target protein that was in um, the uh, endocytic vesicle, that was originally in the plasma membrane, which we... Um, had the adapter protein complex to bind to and then the clathrin bound there, this is going to end up within the early endosome. So here's our target protein now. Okay, so let me colour in this target protein. So we'll now have the target protein in purple. Okay, and uh, it should be stressed that this is still the cytoplasmic domain. The cytoplasmic domain is always going to remain 
in uh, the cytoplasm, and this now is the extracellular domain here. Okay, right, now, what happens next? Well, basically, um, there is other the endosomes which you can now go on to. Either you can bud another vesicle off this early endosome. So what will happen is you'll bud a vesicle off this early endosome, which may well contain your target protein, and you can go to another endosome. So let's have another endosome here. And it will have to get smaller simply because we're running out of space. So there's another endosome down here in the endocytic pathway known as the late endosome. So, okay, we've delivered our protein cargo from the plasma membrane to the early endosome via these endocytic vesicles. There are now pathways by which the protein can be transferred from the early endosome to the late endosome. And this is what happens if you want to destroy the target protein. So let's say we've got some protein that's too highly expressed in the plasma membrane and we want to reduce the expression of it. We can endocytose it into um, endocytic vesicles. It can come into the early endosome. We can then bud off vesicles from the early endosome which contain this protein and then send it to the late endosome. So our protein will now go into the late endosome here. Okay, and then finally there's one last um, station which you go to, which is the station which is going to destroy this protein. So the late endosome can then have vesicles bud off it, and those vesicles will go and fuse with something known as the lysosome. Okay, so the lysosome is another uh, intracellular organelle. It's membrane bound, and it contains a bunch of enzymes known as lytic enzymes or lysozymes. So let me label these up. So this is a lysozyme. It also contains uh, a very, well, it also has a very low pH. I think it's around uh, 5, it's pH, but I think it's 4.9 or something, 4.8, 4.9. Um, so basically, that pH will denature proteins. It's ideal for these lysozyme enzymes to work, which will chop up the proteins. So basically, any prote protein that goes to the lysosome will be destroyed. Okay, so if we wanted to remove proteins from the plasma membrane, we'd endocytose them via clathrin-mediated endocytosis. They go to the early endosome. The protein would then be uh, would then have a vesicle bud off. Well, sorry, the, there would then be a vesicle that buds off the early endosome with the protein from the membrane of the early endosome in, which would take it to the late endosome, and then again this budding process would happen which would take the protein to the lysosome. So it goes from early endosome to late endosome to lysosome. Now, if for instance you uh, temporarily wanted to reduce the expression of receptors on uh, the plasma membrane, and we're going to come back to this uh, when we talk about desensitization. So let's say we've got some receptors on our plasma membrane, and currently there is a lot of agonist molecules for this receptor coming. So let's say we've got some receptor here, okay, which I'll just denote as R, and we've got some protein here, uh, sorry, not some protein, we've got some agonist molecule for it that at the moment is in very high concentration. So here's the agonist molecule in blue, and here's the receptor in orange, okay? Now, if this agonist is overstimulating the cell, i.e. the cell thinks that it's uh, getting overstimulated, what it can do is it can remove the receptors temporarily from its cell membrane to protect itself from the agonist, basically. And what will happen is they will get endocytosed into clathrin-coated uh, endocytic vesicles. The clathrin will uncoat, and it will then go into the early endosome. Now, we don't want to destroy our receptor, so we don't want to send it to the late endosome and then to the lysosome. Instead, we just want to store it in the early endosome until, um, until it's ready to uh, go back to the membrane, i.e. until it's safe to put it back when the agonist has gone down in concentration. So, if you want to return the protein back to the membrane, what you do is you bud a vesicle off the early endosome. So, let's say we've got our vesicle here, which will have your protein that you want to be returned to the plasma membrane. That, endos uh, that but vesicle here will now fuse with another endosome known as the recycling endosome. Okay? So, what will happen is your 
protein that's destined to go back to the plasma membrane will temporarily go into the recycling endosome. And then finally, a vesicle will bud off the, um, bud off the recycling endosome. And then what will happen is that vesicle will be exocytosed. It will join into the plasma membrane. So that's the pathway by which you can return proteins to the plasma membrane if you want to. So the early endosome then, it's this sort of station basically where all things that are being endocytosed with the exception of this direct recycling pathway and by the way this pathway would be called the indirect recycling pathway. Okay, um, so um, all endocytic vesicles nearly all anyway, come to the early endosome and the proteins they've endocytosed will be stored temporarily in this intracellular organelle known as the early endosome. Okay, from there it can either go through a pathway which is going to lead to its destruction, it can be sent to the late endosome and then on to the lysosome, or it can be recycled to the plasma membrane via the recycling endosome. And this is the endocytic pathway.